Welcome back. The last Monte Carlo burn-up coupling scheme that we are going to learn about now is a scheme which is based on the implicit Euler method. So again, there are more variants of the Monte Carlo burn-up coupling scheme based on the implicit Euler method. I'm going to describe one of them. So again, uh, let's have a couple of time steps. We have time t0, t1, t2. So at the beginning, our system is described by the look light field n0. And the idea of the coupling schemes, which are based on the implicit other method, is that over each time step, the fuel is depleted with the neutron flux, uh, which corresponds to the end of the time step. So for instance, when we look at the very first time step, yeah, it means that the system should be depleted with the neutron flux corresponding to the time t1. But the problem is that we don't have the flux that corresponds to time t1. We have the system which is given by the nuclide field N0 and all we can do at this point is to calculate the flux that corresponds to this uh, system. So we get flux phi 0. Now in order to obtain the neutron flux for the time t1 we will have to perform a depletion simulation first. And we have no other neutron flux than the flux phi 0. So uh, we will have to deplete the system with this flux at first. So with the first depletion simulation we will obtain the nuclide field vector N1 and we can uh, call it the approximation 0. So at this point we can uh, use this nuclide field vector and we can run a criticality simulation with a system that is uh, given by this uh, nuclide field vector. So from such a criticality calculation we will obtain finally the end of the time step neutron flux phi 1. So let's call this the first approximation. So now we can use this flux to redeplete the fuel in the system over the first time step. So from the second burn-up simulation we will obtain the nuclide field vector N1 and uh, we can call it the uh, first approximation because this is done with the correct uh, end of the time step neutron flux. Now when you compare these two nuclide fields you'll see they are not the same because they were obtained from different burn-up simulations. They were used different uh, fluxes for these burn-up simulations. So we can actually improve the uh, fuel depletion. Uh, we can obtain uh, a new neutron flux for a system which is given by this nuclide field vector. So uh, let's run the Monte Carlo solver again and we can obtain the neutron flux phi 1 and we can call it the second uh, iteration. Now at this point we have two results for the end of the time step flux. We have the first and the second iteration of the flux phi 1. Now you could perhaps argue that the second iteration of the neutron flux is better than the first iteration. Uh, so we should use the second iteration for the final redepletion of the system. However, you have to realize that the second iteration actually includes some compensation of errors for the first iteration of the uh, neutron flux. And moreover, the both uh, results contain uh, heavy neutron noise. And uh, really the best thing we can do at this point 
is to combine these two iterations together. So let's establish a new quantity which we can call the averaged neutron flux for the end of the time step. Uh, we can call it the second iteration of the averaged flux and that would be average of all the results obtained uh, for the end of the time step flux. So then we can use this averaged flux to uh, obtain the final depletion over the first time step. So we are going to use uh, this flux together with the initial no nuclide field vector and we will obtain the nuclide field uh, vector N2. So this is actually the second iteration. Now you can uh, repeat this process over and over. So you can have for instance 10 uh, iterations for the nuclide field vector and the average uh, neutron flux. At each of these improvements you have to average the neutron flux over, over all these uh, results that you obtain from the Monte Carlo solver. And then you repeat uh, the whole procedure again for the next time step and so on. So I realized that the description I made in the previous slide may be a little bit messy. So you may get a better understanding of the scheme from this uh, description here. So as you can see, uh, again the index i accounts for the time steps. Uh, and then we have another loop here that I call the inner loop. And the index n accounts for the step within the inner loop. Within each uh, step of this inner loop, the uh, average neutron flux is improved together with the uh, nuclide field vector. So you can do, for instance, uh, 10 of these uh, inner steps within each time step in order to obtain really accurate uh, result for the nuclide field vector as well as the neutron flux distribution. And here I have results of a numerical test done with a very simplified uh, numerical model. In this case there are 10 inner steps within the inner cycle. So the average neutron flux is improved 10 times within each time step. The length of the time step is quite large, 30 days. So as you can see here, I have results for step number 30 and 31. And this is the slab system uh, in which the neutron flux finally has a correct shape. So it's symmetrical. You can see it's not a cosine shape because we have the xenon feedback in the system which flattens out the flux distribution. You can see that the xenon distribution is pretty much similar to the neutron flux distribution in the system. So let me summarize the lesson now. So we have learned that the coupling schemes which are based on the implicit Euler method are numerically stable. The stability is not conditioned by the length of the time step. Nevertheless, it is of course recommended that you keep the time step length as short as possible, because if you choose to set the time step length very large, then simply the end of the time step neutron flux is not a good representation for uh, the whole time step. So uh, the results, although they would be stable, they would not be really very realistic. Now some people argue that they have to use very large time steps in Monte Carlo burn-up simulations simply because the Monte Carlo solver is computationally so costly. Now 
that is not really a good argument because you can always choose the computing cost for your Monte Carlo simulation by choosing the number of cycles that you simulate and the number of neutron histories that you simulate at every cycle. So for instance when you choose to decrease the uh, length of the time step twice uh, then you can simply reduce the number of neutron histories that you simulate at every criticality cycle also twice and the total computing cost of the whole Monte Carlo burn-up simulation will not change in this case. As a matter of fact some recent studies suggest that the computing efficiency may be even improved if you reduce the time step length in your Monte Carlo burn-up simulations. So I recommend you to use the uh, coupling schemes which are based on the implicit Euler method. Uh, unfortunately there are not many uh, Monte Carlo burn-up codes that implement this uh, scheme. However it is currently in implemented in the MCB code as well as in Serpent 2 and hopefully the number of uh, Monte Carlo burn-up codes that include this scheme will grow. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.